ninety percent of the dreams are just a release, releasing these desires in the night. The second type of dream could indicate many things if one is able to watch it, especially if something is concerned with your health. The third layer of dream is opening up of new areas of memory within you can be very painful. There is another kind of dream, tantra. It's just this, that you dream up something and slowly you bring it into reality. One was saying a dream. There are different uh, aspects of your mind. and the existence, which we refer to as dream. You have of course heard of the famous speech, yes, I have a dream. But now we're talking about dreams that you don't dream but they happen to you. You do not arrive at it because of the nature of life that you're experiencing, but seem to happen to you from somewhere. These dreams uh, can be categorized into four categories. These four can be further categorized into many, many more, but we will look at the four. Ninety percent, I would say, or more, ninety percent of the dreams are just a release. When I say release, most human minds, are made like this, they cannot help it. Whatever they recognize as good, beautiful, attractive, valuable, they cannot help desiring it. So the multiple desires that the mind generates through the day, most of the desires are not even conscious. It's simply happening because the mind is in that mode. If something is good, I must have it. So when it's in that mode, it keeps on desiring many, many, many things. It's your fortune that all those desires don't come true. If they come true, you will be in such a great mess. So, the dream work for, works for you. Now, uh, being in the Hatha Yoga program right now, after having woken up early in the morning and doing four hours of whatever sadhana and the study and everything, in the afternoon when you… whether you would like to hit the sack, or uh, you would like a coffee or a tea, they will give you kullu soup. Now famous, kullu soup. So now, your mind thinks, oh, I wish I had some coffee to drink or tea, tea to drink, something. Tonight, you see yourself in your dream. You're drinking a barrel of coffee. Or maybe you went to the ocean and Indian Ocean has become all coffee. I'm just saying a ridiculous example. 
when I am saying dreams are an exaggeration of all the things that you desire. Or in other words, it's a release. In your dream you're fulfilled, drinking your coffee. Next day you can handle the day. Next day you can handle the kullu soup little more gracefully. Yes? If this release doesn't happen in your dream, now this can be become a great frustration. This can become such a big compulsion within you. So dream is working for you in that sense. Releasing these desires in the night when you pass to sleep because the body is at rest. So there's a whole lot of energy available for the activity of the mind. Mind is using this time and energy to work itself out. Ninety percent of the dreams fall under this category. There is nothing to do about this, nothing to remember, no need to remember, let it go. But if you are having lot of dreams on a daily basis, now you must look at the day. You must become more conscious. The more conscious you become during your day, you will see the less dreaming will happen in the night. More unconsciously you aspire for everything around you, the more dreaming will happen. This, this distinctly in your experience, you just… Uh, meditate strongly enough through the day, you will see that night when you sleep. It's not that there's no dreaming at all, there is, but it is considerably less. Another manifestation of the dream is, there is something called as prarabdha. Prarabdha means Now, uh, there, is, there is a vast accumulation of memory in the system. This is something that we refer to as the karmic structure or the karmic body. Karmic body is just memory body. A huge memory is there. If all that memory comes into play now in your life, your mind will break for sure. It's too much memory for anybody to handle. This happened to me thirty years ago. Suddenly, I had a huge experience and the next thing is memory that I cannot handle. Lifetimes of memory just rushing through my mind, almost like my mind is going to break. Because there was an immense experience, you can handle it. Otherwise, your mind will break when such memory falls upon your mental structure. It cannot handle the latent memory becoming an active process. So, nature has devised a way or your own system has evolved a way of taking up one part of the memory as the allotted memory to be dealt with right now. This is called as prarabdha. It's a very common word that uh, it was a normal conversation. During our grandmother times, these days uh, it's all going away. But even now in the villages, I think it's very much there. If something is not happening the way they thought it should happen, they say, are you prarabdha? That means it's already allotted memory, it's coming, it's playing. It's not happening here, it's happening here. But that is also ascribed to what is imprinted within you is playing out in front of you. So that is the second type of dream, it is playing out. It is playing out in your day-to-day -day behavior, in your thought, in your emotion, the way your body feels, 
If you observe carefully, you will see every day when you wake up in the morning, if you observe very carefully, not just the muscular structure of your body, if you observe carefully how your body feels, you will see every day it will be different. Because prarabdha, place in a certain way, creating everything that happens, every memory release that happens on the mental structure will naturally create a certain sense sensation or a sensory pattern in the physiological structure. So depending upon what type of prarabdha on that day, your body begins to feel in a certain way. If people who are conscious, if you observe the way your body feels, today you know what's coming. Many of you might have noticed on certain days when something acute happened, somehow in the morning itself you're feeling funny and you went and crashed somewhere. Many people, they, not be, they need not be enlightened or super conscious about what's happening within themselves, but many so-called ordinary people might have felt this when something acute is coming that day, already when they woke up in the morning they were feeling funny and uh, because they do not know how to decipher, they walked into it. Those who know how to decipher, on that day they will step back. They know today is not a good day. So, not a good day, not because there's something wrong with the day, it's not going to work out for you because your whole pattern is happening in a certain way. Because the memory influences the way your energy functions, your body functions, your mind functions and what happens around you. So this is prarabdha, finding expression. And the same is happening in the night in the form of a dream. They may have all kinds of strange things mixed up. You in these kind of dreams, you will have somebody who is around you and somebody else whom you do not know. A situation that you know and a situation you do not know all overlapping, mixed up. Many people would have noticed such dreams. You're in your home but some strange character is actually in your house or you are in some strange place but your whole family is there. So what is known to you and what is known… unknown to you, what you consciously remember and what you do not consciously remember, all of them are entwined in this dream. This is a, a release of prarabdha. This could have some meaning in the sense if you… you don't have to observe the images of the dream, you have to observe the residue of the dream. Depending upon how the dream has worked out, is it just working out of your latent desires or is some other memory playing a role in making this happen? You don't go about looking at the imagery. Imagery is not important, but the residue it lives, leaves on the body. When you wake up in the mor morning, how do you feel? If you… see, this is the reason why those who closely watching their life avoid all intoxicants and stimulants. If you're pumping in intoxicants and stimulants, you cannot notice anything. Every day, feels… early morning feels like hell anyway. They have to work themselves out of it. So once you play with the nervous system, all this is jumbled up, this is not even relevant for such people. Once there are intoxicants and stimulants, it just won't work because your nervous system starts saying something else which is of a completely different nature. The prarabdha, the second type of dream, 
that we talked about could indicate many things if one is able to watch it. Especially if something is concerned with your health or the possibility of destruction or damage to your body, Prarabdha is a good place to watch. I never ever talk about dreams because there are a whole bunch of people who will go crazy imagining all kinds of things on a daily basis. I saw this in my dream, so this is going to happen today, tomorrow that's going to happen. Their imagination will run wild. Dreams will not happen in the night, throughout the day it will start happening. So the third layer of dream is the… if you touch certain states of experience in your life. We could actually do a survey on this. Many of you might have found after you went through a powerful experience, let's say you were initiated into Shambhavi or you went through a Bhava Spandana or you went through a Samyama program or you went through some other initiation process, the dream patterns seem to have changed after that. The type of dreams that you're getting has changed, the volume of dreams could have changed, it could have become more or less or something else. Some change could have happened after a powerful experience. What is the meaning of a powerful experience? A powerful experience means somehow you cross some kind of threshold within you. There are layers and layers of boundaries that one has set up within himself. On a particular day you broke through one or you crossed one layer of something, so the pattern of dream could change. So what was not in play, that memory bank which was not in play, has begun to come into play, new release. <laughs> I don't know if you understand. In India every Friday they say new release, that means a new cinema is coming. So this is a new release. This can of worms were never there, suddenly new release. Because a powerful experience happened and broke through a certain barrier of memory, these barriers are your protection because if all of it opens up at once, no mind can handle it, it'll just break. So this is called this storehouse of memory or storehouse of karmic substance is called sanchitta. This means this is a warehouse of memory. If all of it comes, nobody will be able to handle. So something from that entered your life. That means this life has become a larger scope than what it was before. Your life was playing out to a certain volume of memory. Now if you break through with a big experience, it has become a larger scope. Larger scope means if you handle it efficiently, larger scope is a great thing. If you handle it inefficiently, larger scope is lot of trouble. In fact, that is all human beings are struggling with, that human life has a larger scope than other creatures. That is the problem, isn't it? If you were like any other creature, you could eat and sleep and be fine. Because it has a larger scope, that is the trouble that they're suffering. So, when a larger scope opens up, then if you handle it right, it'll be very wonderful. If you don't, it'll be painful. But even if it's painful, in the ultimate scheme of things, it's still good for you. You don't like that. <laughs> now, Hatha yoga is painful, isn't it? Yoga is painful, come on, let's admit it. It is painful, but we still do it 
because in the larger scheme of things, it's good for us. In some way we understand that, that's why we're doing it, isn't it? So, opening up of new… new areas of memory within you can be very painful because now you're putting your life on a fast forward. What should have been handled, probably in a next edition, you're trying to handle it in this edition because you're in a little bit of a rush. You don't want to have one more edition. You want to say everything you want to say in this edition. Now it becomes more complex, isn't it? But if you handle it right, it is very good. Otherwise, it suddenly feels like after entering the spiritual path, everything in the whole universe seems to be kicking you up from every direction because that's how it is. Because you opened up another dimension which you are not handling. I don't know how it is where you come from, but in India there is something called as tenth standard, which is a board exam. <laughs> not much stuff in this class, very minimal, but still this is a… <laughs> this is a place where children are terrified usually because the examiners are not their own teachers, somebody else is going to correct their paper. So it all depends how you've been passing till then. Most of them are terrified and uh <laughs> anti-diarial tablets will sell in millions on that day and the examination comes and all kinds of stuff. This is only a kind of a preparing the child, kind of a rehearse for really graduation for the high school which comes at twelfth standard. If you pass tenth standard, which is supposed to be one milestone in the education process, you don't get into your better place. Suddenly eleventh and twelfth is in a different dimension of study. Till then it was just this, suddenly eleventh and twelfth is completely… it is everything is multiplying at least four times over in terms of syllabi and complexity and everything that you require to study. So passing is not always a good thing. <laughs> but if you don't pass, you don't go to the next step. If you remain in the st same step, you will suffer stagnation. If you move to the next step, you suffer a larger… a larger challenge that is bound to be there. So this is just like that. If you remain in the same place, it seems to be… life seems to be comfortable. If you move to the next step, it is definitely next step, but it is a much larger challenge to handle. So in terms of dreams, it finds expression in a completely different way. Once Sanchita begins to find expression in your dream, it will become completely, absolutely meaningless dreams. One spot here, one spot there, one this, one that, one that, nothing will be continuous. It will start happening wild dreams without any meaning. You cannot ascribe any kind of meaning to it. This happened. You heard of Bernard Shaw? Not heard of Bernard Shaw? The drama… the playwright? Okay. A new… a new playwright who wrote a play and directed it, invited Shaw to come and watch his play. Shaw went, sat there. Within a few minutes he slept off. When the play was over, the young artist or the young writer came to Shaw and said, I invited you because I wanted your comments, this is my first play. Bernard Shaw looked at him and said, sleep is a comment. <laughs> so you are not sleeping well or you are sleeping well. It is a commentary on your life. 
there is another kind of dream which is… Uh, which is not really a dream. Now, uh, there is Bhairavi here. She is a dream, we dreamed her up. You dream it up in such a way that it becomes a reality. Or in other words, this is a dream to establish your consciousness and your energy in a certain way. I was mentioning the other day also, down under in Australia, the Aborigine people call the time of creation as dream time. Creator dreamed it up. In India, we call this maya or illusion or an illusion can be called a dream, isn't it? It's called dream time. The time of creation is referred to as dream time. We say, Leela, he's playing with, you know, creator is weaving his maya and playing around. The, the words Leela and maya describe creation in the most appropriate manner because that's how it is. And the whole science of what we are referring to as tantra is just this, that you dream up something and slowly you bring it into reality. First you create it here and slowly roll it out and it becomes a reality. All deities were made like this. For a particular purpose, they created it here and rolled it out and it's as real as anything. In everybody's experience, not just if it's… if it's true only in your experience, it could still be a dream. When your dream becomes a living experience for everybody, that's reality, isn't it? Not because you're trying to influence them by suggestion, not because you're trying to hypnotize them with a powerful suggestion, you need not know anything. You walk into the Devi temple, it hits you in the face. You don't have to believe anything because now she's reality. But just two, three years ago, she was just a dream. So this dream, now a manifest reality. And all of us happened like that. It's a dream which found a physical expression in a certain way. But without using any material, you can give an expression to a dream. It is not really a dream, this is creation. This is how the whole creation has happened. If you can play with the illusion, when I say play with the illusion, suppose I want I can play with a ball. There is no ball, but I start playing. If we do this intensely enough, after some time there will be a ball. Not that we have to get a ball from somewhere. If you do this, actually you can feel something bouncing around. Not just in my experience, whoever comes here, they can feel the ball. So this is creation. And that also is rooted in your dream. Because if you cross the boundaries of sanchita, then you are touching the dimension, that which is the source of creation. There if mind can function, usually when you touch it, mind will be so overwhelmed unless it's trained that it just becomes pfft. This probably some people are describing as no mind. You go into a zone or a space where the moment you come in the presence of, a di of an energy which is beyond your understanding, you freeze. This cannot be termed confusion. It's a state where mind will not exist unless 
it has gone through a certain level of preparedness. So when you come in front of, or let's say in traditional terms, you would say, now you faced God, now your mind is frozen. What a waste, isn't it? So much you did to get there. When you get there, you're frozen. It's still useful, but if your mind is trained enough, if there is substantial sadhana behind you, when you cross that place where there is no memory, right now your mind exists the way it exists only because there is memory, do you understand? When you cross that boundary where the terrain of memory is over, only of perception is there, most minds, I would say 99.999, you can put as many nines as you want, that many, that much percentage of the minds will be frozen if they have no memory to operate. These minds are operating only of existing memory. If memory is taken away, they will not know how to do anything. What you're doing as yoga is to train the mind, train the mind, train the mind to a place where tomorrow if memory falls down, your whole karmic structure just fell down, still you have a mind. Then if your body falls down, that means if you fall dead, you still have a mind. Now you can navigate yourself where you want, otherwise you go by your tendencies. So these are four types of dreams. The last one you cannot really call it a dream. It is… it is… Uh, what to say? It is the other bank. It is not this bank, it is the other bank of existence. So, one thing that I must tell you as advice is, whatever the dream, learn to ignore it. Because if you start looking for meanings in dream, you will lose meaning for your life, you will become hallucinatory. <laughs>